do 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 I'm sorry. You're I, doing I, the nin- 90s strip music again. And, and where did I get it from? I don't know. You, because that's what you just did 30 seconds ago. You you were sitting there making that, <laughs> humming out that tune. So no, <laughs> I don't think so. No, no, you weren't seriously. Seriously, that you you were you were doing that like thirty seconds ago. That's exact. I I just copied you. You were doing that. You were sitting there doing that. You weren't aware that you were doing it, but you were actually <laughs> sitting there humming a striptease. Theme. That's <laughs> not possible. <laughs> it is. I'm sitting here listening to you, and I was like, "What am I gonna?" I was like, "What am I gonna hum at the start?" And I'm, like, I'm just gonna copy what <laughs> what you did, what you just did. That that that's what I just I probably did. Probably just what? copy what you just did before, before, before. Because you did it before, before, before the test. Mm, I wonder if it's recorded in the uh, the uh, little things that we. Uh, that when I was checking the vocal levels, I'm gonna go back afterwards. Okay. And check the check and <laughs> check the vocal level thing to see. I can't believe see. that I would have done that. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> what well, that you would have that you would have woken up in the morning and the first thing it's you would have done start humming your nineties strip music. Nineties strip music is it? Nineties strip music. I don't know. It sounds like something that you would you and would have in a no. movie. No, that stuff is ancient. Like the stuff was like a hundred years ago, right? When they had like these these bars out in yeah, the 90s. wild west. <laughs> hundred years ago. Nineties was hundred years ago. It's last last millennium, millennium, century, century. millennium. <laughs> <laughs> Both century and millennium. Okay. It's a thousand years old. Why, do, why is a wait? Why is a millennium a thousand years? A point when it's like mil million. Why does it mean a thousand years when the word means mille mil? means thousand? So million doesn't mean million. Million means a thousand. Is that what? Is that the etymology? Well, why do you think that millimeter or milliliter? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a <laughs> it's, it's, it's what it is. It's right? what it is, exactly. So, um, a millimeter is a thousandth of a meter. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Right? And a millisecond is a thousandth of a second. Yes. But a million is what it is. Is what it is. Uh-huh. Is that a thousand times a thousand then? Is that a million? A yes. thousand times a thousand? Yes. Okay, so there is a connection there. I guess so. So like, uh, wh- what do we call a thousand times a thousand? Well, well, it's milli times milli, so we'll call it a million. Or we could call it milli vanilli, but that would just be too much of a weird 80s pop. I mean, look at French, right? French is close to Latin. And thousand in French is mille. Right? Look at the, okay, the okay, look at the right. preposition cent centimeters or centiliter. That's a hundredth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in French a hundred is cent. That's why a cent is a cent because it's a hundredth of of a euro. Right? What? Oh okay s- oh okay, a cent is a is a <laughs> Okay, I, I get it. I get it. You a get cent it, a yeah? cent is a hundredth of, of whatever you know, whatever currency, whatever currency you're, you're yes. measuring, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, I get it. Um, yeah. So oh. God knows where your thousand comes from, or your hundred. <laughs> well, you're a Germanic language, so it obviously comes from whatever Germanic language comes from. T- yeah, yeah, because it shouldn't. It shouldn't be the word a thousand, then, should it? Well, it shouldn't if you're if you're uh, taking things from Latin but you're not because some, well, some well, s- you're, you're, you're taking some words from Latin but mm-hmm. 
you're a mixture, right? Because you had a language before the Romans came. And well, yeah, there was. Uh, you had you had. There was all sorts Celtic of and different things Pictish coming in. Norse and regional variations as Welsh, yeah. and Cornish, and the original English dialects. You had your Anglo-Saxons. Yeah, yeah, you had Anglo -Sax Anglo-Saxon. You had the other Germanic forms. You had other yeah. types of. Uh, of of language as well. You have the the lost languages. So yeah, there's not much continuity in the hundred thousand sort of million in terms of language. It's not much obvious obvious mm. connection there. I mean I'm sure if you go into the etymology um that uh that, that there's obviously some logic behind it, but it's not obvious from looking at the words hun dread Thou sand million. True. <laughs> True. <laughs> and then it gets even even weirder. Yeah. Then it gets even weirder. Does yeah. it? <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, <laughs> because you have a milliard and a billion. And yeah, that's a Slovak Those thing, so. two numbers completely yeah, yeah, confuse but me. Yeah, but billion is different in different languages. Billion doesn't yeah. always mean the same. So that's what I mean. That's what's confusing. That billion is different in different languages. Yeah, that billion that is a different number in your language, and it's a different number in my language. Oh, that's 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 just weird, stupid, <laughs> right? That that that's just stupid to have have that the same word for a certain quantity meaning different quantities in different places. Yes, but you're not going to change it, and we're not going to change it, right? Well, you, <laughs> you're you, not gonna, you can you're change gonna it. You can change it. You could have an international accounting dictate that says you should use this word for for this. Well, are you gonna go to a whole country and say to five million people, "Okay, people, well, up until now, a billion used to be this number, but from now on, it's gonna be this if number." It, if it's practical, yes, because that's what laws do. They drive on the left or drive on the right or whatever. That's what laws do. They oh. they dictate to people um, what kind <laughs> of flow of, of, of communication or transportation or whatever you're doing is, is going to be better for Can for you imagine everybody. the chaos it would create and everything? But the whole point is to avoid chaos, to have yeah. standardization. You know, it, it's uh, like when people build machines for factories and companies. You want... The, you, you, you okay there? Did you spill your coffee? I just spilled coffee into my sleeve. <laughs> into your sleeve? Yeah. That's quite a miss. <laughs> Your sleeve is about... Like Microphone's dry. Okay, yeah, you don't want to pour coffee over the microphone. How is your coffee? Is it fine? Is it nice? Is it warm? <laughs> it's warming up my arm right warming now. your arm. There you go. It's warming up your arm. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Really, really, really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, how does that feel? Sticky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sticky. Feels do you know what? Do you know what the worst thing in the world is? Sticky fingers. Now. Sticky finger. Now it's gone down your arm and over in, in, onto your chest. To no. my elbow. Oh no. Now I have to. Coffee on your elbow. Now I really have to get this washed, don't I? No. <laughs> like it should have been washed about. Little six wee coffee ago. badge there. Oh no. <laughs> it wasn't the here six months ago. <laughs> no, I. S oh, this. <laughs> It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you were. It should have been washed. <laughs> no, it was washed when I came. Yeah. Yeah. What have you What have you been doing? Rolling around on the the grass I've outside. I've been living in it. This is my working attire, my At nightgown, my night. What is it? Dressing gown is what I work in. When your nightgown becomes your daily attire, it is probably time to change something. Anyway, no, that's that's sorry. That that's my uh, NPR voice. Did that's just scary. Yeah. I could do that. I, I, I could do those voiceover things for like 30 seconds and then I would I would have enough and have to return to whatever whatever voice or language or thing that, that, that I use. There you go. I was going to say something just before. You spilled your coffee. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to make some point. but um, I'm sorry for distracting you with my coffee shower. It's... <laughs> Um, do you think the coffee? That's, do you that's think actually the um, 
the is that the that's I think the fourth cup of coffee I've made this morning already. Do you think that the coffee will like soak in through my skin and make me look younger or something? Because uh, I'm thinking that you should pro you could probably market it. Coffee showers. Coffee showers. It's like well, if you can have rejuvenating coffee, coffee showers. Don't they have the um, what's that thing where they pump stuff up your ass? Anemone? An, 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 no. <laughs> no, I was going to say, it's like, isn't that a sea creature or something? <laughs> it's called anema. And like what's the sea thing? I can't get it. It's anemone. A le- lemony, that's, that, that, that's a scent, isn't it? Anemone. <laughs> <laughs> you what? And then, at the age of 43, he discovered the English word anemone and laughed his head (laughs) off and died in his bed. (laughs) Oh, my God. And then... (laughs) What's that? It's an enemy. Quick, kill him! Not an enemy. No, no, I can't, I can't, lemony? Anemone. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure that's wrong. I'm so sure that's wrong. Google it. I can't Google it right now. I just have to trust you. I have to go with the flow. Anemone. Right. Anemone. <laughs> just, just, just keep repeating. I'm just going to Repe- keep repeating it repeat until, you, until you... Repeat the word. Repeat the word. Until you die of, of laughing. Yeah. It's a funny word. That's got to be in the top ten funny words in the English language. Do you think? Yeah, t- 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 definitely. Or the top ten words that people mispronounce, can't pronounce, or... or um, um. Your mum can't pronounce it. Are you, are you okay there? You, you kind of I'm looking for my phone. <laughs> I was looking for my phone because I wanted to find it. Pa- did you are having a panic attack because you <laughs> have your phone in your hand. I wanted to find it for you on my phone. I know, I trust you. I, I, I trust you implicitly with this. I wanted this, to find the pronunciation of the word anemone for you. No, I, <laughs> I don't need to find it because I've heard you say it like ten times. Right <laughs> So but I thought that maybe if you heard I'm, I'm going to get it wrong it. anyway. I'm going to say lemony or an enemy or... Enema. A, 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 yeah, that, w- that was where we were. We were uh, but under coffee, it's called enema, right? Uh-huh. Where they pump stuff up your ass. Yeah. Which is just, yes. just odd. In mm-hmm. my opinion. Supposedly very good for your health, but I don't think I'd go that far. I don't know. I mean, I mean <laughs> some stuff's supposed to travel the other way. Not that, not that it's not good to, you know, sew up the wounds and stuff and things, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, d- 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 you d- not sew up that wound. No, because <laughs> it's not a wound. <laughs> That's why. Yes, I'm constantly fixing things. They're not broken, but I enjoy myself anyway. Um, uh, yeah, uh, under coffee. Yes, they are. Where, um, there people, are. People, um, don't drink coffee. Which really, it would be easier to drink it than to have it, you know. Pumped up your bum. Pumped up your bum, yeah. It's supposed to d- detoxify the colon. Who? The colon. Colon? Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's colon doing up your bum? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> It's the uh, let's learn basic words of English <laughs> language, number two. The only thing I understood was that Colin is an enemy, and we, <laughs> <laughs> we have to get him. Come on, lads. <laughs> People, Colin is not your enemy. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, um. It's supposed to detoxify the colon. Col- colon or colon? Colon. Colon. C O L O N. Like col- like what you like what you write in the sentence. Yeah, is is that why it's called that? Because it looks like that. Um, I don't think so. Because you know, isn't it like like a like a, it's a comma with a dot above it, right? Uh huh. Yeah, it isn't like the comma called the. No, that's a semicolon. Colon is the two dots, no. Colon is the two dots. Colon. Oh, yeah. Semicolon. Oh, God. This is the teacher of English language. 
the model. Okay. Dus is het nummer de nummer die is. Yes. <laughs> dus het nummer de colon is, or how to spell it. Okay, we'll just call this podcast Things That I Don't Know. Okay? <laughs> things That I Don't Know. I Good, get muddled sometimes. Could we call it I Know Everything? Um, yeah, there, there's probably a billion podcasts out there that are uh, everything you need to know about everything. We okay, know, we've we got could, that book. We could call it, we, we could call book. it Mums Know Everything. That's a great title. I know. That's a really, really good title. Oh, there you go. Um, anyway. That would be a good um, hashtag. I always thought that colon in the sentence comes from the word column, like C-O-L-U-M-N. Like Like, the architectural thing. Yeah, the things that hold up the fronts of buildings. Yeah, because it's something on top of something else. Something on top of something else. It's like one dot on top of the other dot. Well, it's actually like it's the column, if you look at it top down. Top down. Yeah. Plan plan view. Oh. Bird view. Well, it's just a circle. Or a square. That, that, that yeah. Well, well, that's what two columns would look like from the you know bird view perspective. They would mm-hmm. look like look like two two circles. Mm-hmm. We yeah. should Google it. Why is colon called the colon? No, no it, it is going to be some some. It's interesting. Latin. Though. You know, there's probably, th- it's such an unusual word mm-hmm. that there's probably some etymological connection between those th- those those two words. You know how you get those funny, those funny, I'm sorry, I'm um, just, I didn't listen to your last sentence. No, no, that, <laughs> that, that that's okay, I, um, I'm used to it. It's okay. You know it's how you get those those uh, funny things like you're scrolling down Facebook and then you get like, a, ooh, read this funny article. It's going to amuse you and waste your time. So you click on it, right? And you read it. No, I've never done that. Um, <laughs> and one of those funny things that completely waste your time was like people making funny mistakes on uh, Twitter or whatever, right? Funny spelling mistakes. Oh, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen anything like that, actually. And uh, they probably gave up on you because <laughs> you don't waste your time. <laughs> they they come up they come up all the time on my Facebook. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well that that tells you a lot, doesn't it? Why do I get all these things about wasting time? Because yeah. you keep clicking on them and they give you more uh-huh. of what you click on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so um, so one of the funny mistakes was somebody mistaking Colin for Cologne. Or the place? No, the the, the the thing that you spray on yourself. See, I've just the mistaken it for a city. <laughs> well, yeah, it's named after a city, yeah. Oh, the, 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 like the smelly connection. stuff, right? Really? Cologne. Col- 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 like col- col- cologne comes from cologne. I, yeah. never, I never made that connection. Well, I, I assume so. Okay, oh, it's an no, assumption. No, no, now, you're, now you're backtracking. It's a you're logical saying, assumption. Well, yeah, it is a, it is a logical assumption that, that two words with the same name have the same or point of origin, right? Yeah. So, that, I mean, that's... Yeah, but um Anyway, it's the it word that's spelled C O L O G N E. Right. Cologne. Cologne. Yes. <laughs> cologne. <laughs> Which is how I, used to it I love the smell of your cologne. The oh, English spelling is so screwed up. So somebody would <laughs> So somebody would write down something like, Oh my boyfriend's been here and uh, I can still smell his colon on my pillow. Colon. <laughs> yeah. Oh just that's <laughs> That's just wrong. <laughs> I know, because they couldn't spell cologne. That's just th- that's just wrong. But English sp- spelling is is so screwed up. Like I remember at school, the uh, I remember f- trying to learn to spell words and like like business. I had to remember it as bus in s. Yeah, business is crazy. Yeah, I'm, I'm still I still get confused by business. Yeah, or. Uh, Wednesday, which I had to remember as Wednesday, because because the the spelling was just so weird. Because you don't pronounce the D, you just say Wednesday. I've know some, I've known somebody who did pronounce the D. Wednesday. They well were you like should, you should pronounce the they D. Were like they were like they were they were English speaker. I think they were American. I they can't remember <laughs> who it was. They were the English speaker. And they would say Wednesday. 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 
That's actually the, I'm pretty sure that's actually the correct pronunciation, but nobody does it because you can't confuse it with any other word contextually or, or Wednesday, you know, through Wednesday. the sound. So people just say Wednesday. I like it, Wednesday. Um, it's kind of weird nasal D. You could do a lot of weird things with the, the, the days of the week, like, you know, Saturday could be Saturd A, right? But um, <laughs> people <don't. laughs> but, but people just don't do that, right? So this is third day, basically. Yeah, yeah, that that's just brought the level of conversation down to base minimum, hasn't it? Um, <laughs> I'm sure Will is gonna like it. Oh uh, yeah, which <laughs> which day is it today? It's your favorite day, Will. Oh, oh yay! Oh, the booby pants day. Oh wait a minute, is there? No, there's not. Is there anything happening today? No, there's not. There's not anything happening. No, today. nothing's happening. There's no market. I don't know. Or is it the last market? <gasps> oh. If it's the last market, we have to go. There's going to be drinks. Oh. 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 oh there's going to be things. Oh, it must the be the last thing about one. Markets is, markets is, it, are wonderful things. is it like the 8th of October or something? Wait. It's the 6th. Well, it must be the, the last market. The 8th, because the 8th would be Monday. Yeah, well, obviously it wouldn't be on Monday. It has to be. We have to go. There's, there's no choice. Everybody's going to be there. The whole village <laughs> is going to be there. Everybody's <laughs> going to like all five people. <laughs> all five people are going to be there. <laughs> Everyone's going to come. They did say we're good. They, they did say and we'll, and we'll be having drinks. Yes. At the market. Yes. Plum brandy. Oh, n uh, that's, a, that's not a good idea in the morning. They know going to serve brandy in the morning. I'm joking. Have you seen those people? Those people drink brandy in the morning. You you know from from those from meeting those people that they drink brandy in the morning. Cause they well, like Amy drinks they brandy they in the morning, like every morning. You think that's why she's so cheerful? Um, <laughs> I don't think so. No, look, Amy's not a brandy in the morning person, right? No, I don't um, think so. So, um, that's you know that's kind of weird. Like, who would name their child? After an alcohol, because there's like people brandy. who like, let's call let's call our daughter Brandy. I'm like, well, that's that's alcohol. Like the one, that would be like calling your son gin, and tonic, or uh, <laughs> or Guinness. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is my son Guinness. <laughs> Guinness, and uh, this is his brother Red Bull. <laughs> you know, but Guinness actually really sounds like a genuine Scottish name. It w that w it's an Irish name. Is it's it? it's the name of the person who founded the company. Yeah. Yeah, Guinness. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, and it's a lot of strange things come from Guinness Henry. That <laughs> just sounds nice. It, um, McGuinness, Mick Mick Guinness is also a common Irish Irish name as well. Okay. Um, so yeah, yeah, people give their 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 names to those things. But I was just thinking that um, hmm. you know, it would be like calling your son. We're gonna call him Whiskey, Whiskey Johnson. <laughs> well, I come to Slovakia, and so hello, my name is Slivovita. Um, Slivka, Slavka. It's oh no, Slavka is from Slava. Slava means from that region. No, no. Slavic. No. Well, it's yes. Isn't it come from that coming from that which and the, the origin of Slavic, Slavic is Slavic. slave. From the Romans. Or it could come from Didn't Slava know. means in Slovak language Slava means oh, I can't remember what to no to translate it into English. Uh Bratislava. Slava. It's like when you celebrate something. Yugoslavia. Slavic celebration. Oslavovat. Uh -huh. To celebrate. Yes, but Slava is more like fame not fame. Give, uh, me a, give me an example. D tell me, tell you know, t give me a, give me a real example. Of it's it like a, it's like a word that you would, you would use in a Christian context when you, when you celebrate the God, and you say holy. Um, no, 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 Slava. He's Slavni. Slavni. He's not celebrated, famous. Celebrated. Celebrated. He's not famous, but he's like enlightened. Slava. Whatever. It doesn't matter. He's cool. <laughs> cool. When you Slava, you're he's cool, basically. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So I can replace the word cool with Slava. Hey yeah. man, you're so down and Slava. Yeah. 
Yeah, so nice. Bratislava would be either like a brotherhood of Slavic oh, brat as a brother. everything Slavic brothers, or it would brothers be of the like cool. or it would be like celebration Sortie of brotherhood des ombres. Yeah. Sortie des ombres. <laughs> so, 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 sorry I'm uh, sorry I just felt like saying that was that. just really weird did you just invent your own language there <laughs> I was trying to speak French I thought it meant I thought I thought that meant um um Brotherhood, no? Well, Bratislava. No, so, Sortie des Ombres. That doesn't mean brotherhood. I've never ever heard it. Fraternité is brotherhood. Ah, uh, okay. Liberty, Egality. Egalité. Egalité. Fraternité. Fraternité. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah, just kind of meaningless rant, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I never thought of. Uh, it would be like bro Brotherhood of Celebration. That would be Bratislava. That would be what it means. That would be a celebrate ce celebration of brotherhood. Celebrate good times. Come yeah. on. Do, 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 That's do, why the beer so cheap do, there. Do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> Keep celebrating brotherhood. Yes. Yeah, alcohol tourism. Uh, there you go. Mm. Yeah, which just leads to people in kilts running up and down the central aisles of planes. Or it could be the brotherhood of Slavic. Yeah. Slavic everything. What? Wouldn't it? What? Could be like the brotherhood of Slavs. Yes, it could. Uh -huh. It could, absolutely. But what would Yugoslavia mean? Well, that's southern Slavs. Yugo. Yugo, Yugo. south. South. Yugo. See, oh, it's so obvious yes. when somebody <laughs> points it out. <laughs> <laughs> right. it's, it's like, this means this. Oh, yeah, I never thought of it like that before. This is, right. this really is all the things that you don't know podcast, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's it. Because <laughs> I know everything else. <laughs> or you know everything else, because mums know, know everything. Mums know everything. Yeah. Oh, I'm rumbling my tumbly. What, what are we going to have for breakfast? Um, brandy. <laughs> courgettes. <laughs> that's, that's how it all started. We could have courgettes. It's just from French again. Cour, courgette. What does that mean? I have no idea. It means the vegetable that nobody likes, but everybody pretends they like it because it's healthy. There you go. Pomme de terre. I always love that. Do you know what that means? Yeah, potato of the ground. Yes. Yeah. No. No, apple of the ground. Yes. I, <laughs> <laughs> I fucked it up again. <laughs> <laughs> I one almost believed you. What do you, potato of the crowd? Because <laughs> <laughs> then you have potatoes of the sky. Wait, wait, wait that would be. <laughs> they call potato of the crowd would be. Pom di terra di terra. Oh, there. <laughs> and then you have potatoes of water. That's, that, that, that's like saying apples of the sky or, hey, <laughs> or I something. I oh, know. A bit weird. French have really weird words sometimes. How are we gonna get people to eat this strange vegetable? Mm, let's call and it. And it gets even weirder. It's potato, potato is a vegetable, right? Yeah. But they call it uh, they call it a fruit. Yeah. It gets even weirder. Oh. Weirder <laughs> because <laughs> weirder. Weirder. <laughs> weirder. <laughs> weirder. <laughs> Not weird. <laughs> Do you know what? It gets even weirder. <laughs> weirder. Mm. It gets even weirder oh, when oh. you want to say. Uh, fries or chips or whatever mm -hmm. in French, mm -hmm. right? Because you call them pommes frites, which means mm -hmm. fried apples. Ah, see, I don't, mon dieu. So chips in oui, France are fried apples. So you like go to the restaurant and you're like, oh, look, they have fried apples. Let's have some. And they bring you potatoes. So basically the French call a potato an apple. Yeah. You know what that is? That's that's to get people <laughs> to think that it's normal and eat it. Because I imagine the first time people saw potatoes, they're like, I'm not eating it. That, that came from underground. That root, <laughs> that, that, that root looks, looks not very tasty. And somebody said, no, no, but you don't understand. It's an apple. It's, it doesn't look like an apple, but it's an apple. It just Dirty grows apple. on the ground. Dirty <laughs> apple, but it's an apple. You should eat roots. They're the source of everything. It's good for you. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. No, no, no. I think I think that it, it went like that. Somebody came somewhere and they saw potatoes, and those potatoes were peeled and chopped up. They looked at the chopped up potato, 
right? It was raw. And so, oh, look, apples. And uh, they took a bit and ate it and they said, oh, freaking fr heck. Fr frig. frig. <laughs> that is disgusting. What kind of apple is this? And the other person would say, oh, that's the apple of the ground. So, oh, okay. oh, you sound like a peeled potato looks like a peeled apple. Uh huh. Ah, they it do. Does. They, they do, don't they? They look, they look the does. same when they're peeled. Yeah. That's, that, that's true. See, I never thought about that before. No, you could look back, back, back to uh, reality. People, back, back <laughs> to no, back to people. <laughs> there is no reality here. It's all matrix. Um, uh, back to people naming their kids after alcohol. That that's kind of weird, right? Mm -hmm. And the fact that that they will have brandy at the m village market because you can see that those people are the kinds of people that e eat e eat brandy <laughs> eat brandy <laughs> for <laughs> breakfast. What are the names of alcohol can be kids' names? Sherry, right? Uh, yeah, uh, Cheryl, Sherry, Sherry, Sherry. So that's a very very good observation. Yeah. Um, Pims. <laughs> Well, th 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 those those might be named after people. Yeah, actually. I think so. Uh, port was, you know, this obviously connected with transportation of of of, of alcohol and things, or mm. the fact that it was, you know, you got it at the port, um, which of course is French for door. Which I always it, it's really interesting that you know the airport and the seaport are the doors to the countries. They are. So. Um, that that's kind port, of port, port, portal. It's somewhere where you enter. Something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Abs so absolutely. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So like when you arrive in a country and you got your passport, which is to pass through the door. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> See, you haven't even thought about that before. Whoa! Have you? My mind has been blown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's your ticket. It's your ticket in, basically. Isn't passport from the word passepartout? It's for passes from passage, yeah. Cause check it out, passe partout in uh, in French, mm -hmm. it's like a um, like a master key that opens oh, every uh, door. Uh, what's right? the French for master key? Passe partout, which pass means partout. which means go through everywhere. Master key. Yeah. No, well, that makes that makes right? sense. Yeah. It means go through everywhere, and passe partout sounds like passport. Passepartout sounds like passport. So passport could be passport like a master key passport. that will get That's you through everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah, that makes perfect <laughs> sense. I don't know if it was like that, but that makes that makes perfect sense. Yeah, it would be the the. But the it's more likely something that will get you to pass through a port, because you would have to get it out at the airport or seaport or any port, really, probably. Yeah, well, you to know, make you get through uh, into the country. Well, because we don't have passport, the, the you entire won't get any further. yeah, the entire legal control system is based on the language of ports, mm -hmm. because it's all it's all water-based control. Mm -hmm. That's why the place where a ship parks. I don't know if we had this discussion before. I can't remember. Docks. Uh, well, that is the same root as doctor, actually. Yeah. Yeah, the docks is the same root as the word for doctor. That that's another path to doctor something. Ah, exactly, meaning to change, right? To doctor means to change something. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the original meaning of the word. Okay. Now, um, where do you the place where you park a ship? Not only is it the port, the actual position of the ship where the place is is called the berth. Right, it's called the berth. Well, the yep. place of the port. The actual place where the ship is in the port uh -huh. is called the berth. Really? Yes. That's just ill, sick, well weird, <laughs> not right, <laughs> wrong. <laughs> yeah, because when you say ill and sick, <laughs> it means good things in the modern <laughs> world because everything is so inverted. But um, yeah, and there's a reason for that. There's a very specific reason for that. But it's actually the same word for uh, when a woman gives, gives, gives birth, and there's a reason for that. Because when you give birth, the baby travels down the birth canal. <laughs> it's yes. a canal. Yes. Yeah. And so the baby is born in water. Yes. And it's the same as the ship is born in water. Because when the baby is born, there's the creation 
of of a legal entity for that which which appears on land so you're traveling from water to land as goods would travel off a ship to land yeah and that's the docks are the docks because the doctor delivers like you deliver packages yeah do you deliver goods the doctor delivers the baby and when the doctor delivers the baby a certificate a birth certificate is created for the goods that have been delivered by the doctor at the docks from the ship in its birth you're hurting and my brain and it's exactly the same principle and that's how legal entities are created because the that then creates a corporate body and the body is something which is real and the body is the body of the child <sighs> and this certificate has a, a number and that's how the legal papers are, are created uh, and then that thing is real as in real estate within society because it has a number related to it so, so which is named after which which um, came first the chicken or the egg the goods the, the good the transportation of goods the language yeah. of the transportation of goods came before the language of birth even though people were born before y yes because before th the yeah goods. because the language that we are using now is built upon the language of trade so originally, of course, birth came first, yeah. but there were a variety of, you know, the, 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 the mix of tongues and spoken words in history, mm -hmm. and there wasn't a correlation between <coughs> those two things. And one of the elements of the esoteric nature of the English language is the fact that the, the, the language related to bringing new people into the world was exactly paralleled with the language of goods that uh, that were that were used in terms of transportation so it's not by accident that uh, that that all of those that all of those things are in fact actually have their origins in the what same what you call it esoteric because uh, the word doesn't really have anything with spiritual <laughs> level does it I mean, it's well, it's semi-esoteric and semi-occultist because the word occult, the origin of the word occult means hidden or unknown. And the word esoteric also partly means hidden and unknown. Yeah, It means not obvious to the eye. Yeah. Does it? I yeah. don't know what yeah. it means. I thought, it it yeah. means es I thought that esoteric means like... like uh, semi-spiritual like yeah, yeah, connection beyond, yeah, beyond of the connection of beyond the physical world connection of spiritual with the physical yeah yeah, yeah it, it's beyond physical right mm -hmm. and so this language <coughs> has a function be are you tangled so you're tangled in cables yeah, yeah. so the yeah that's um, you know originally <coughs> originally ships were tied to the um, to the docks <coughs> with mm -hmm. a cord with cords yeah mm -hmm. I don't know. And, and the umbilical cord is what connects the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the baby to the mother. So, um, you know, the cutting the cord was symbolic of the allowing the, the the ship to be free and, and travel. Mm, the, the, the um, they don't cut them; they untie them usually. It, it has to be clipped at one end, right? I don't know. Any anyway. Yeah. Anyway, that's 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 too deep into yeah, that's what I wanted. I just I just want yeah, what I was saying is that I find that interesting an interesting parallel. Uh but I personally probably wouldn't call it esoteric because I don't see any anything spiritual about it. But maybe I've got the meaning of the word esoteric wrong, I don't know. Well, I, it's uh, research. Well, it, my perspective on the <coughs> excuse me, excuse me. Excuse what me. did happen with my on, phone? On the spiritual element, mm -hmm. is, don't panic. I'm not uh, panicking. I just wanted to Google the word esoteric. Um, you know, it's the. I forgot what I was going to say now. Mm -hmm. Completely, completely vanished. I threw you mind. off. Did I? Yeah. Sorry. Um, I was going to define something, but um, I. Uh, I can't remember what uh you can define these stickers. Oh the the kids um <coughs> you might have noticed 
the there are less stickers in the little no, little, little sticker pack. I haven't noticed, but I have noticed these. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, there you go. That's that's where they ended up <laughs> over there. Um, I just the kids love doing that, especially well, jazz. Anything that sticks, uh -huh. which goes back to my earlier point that the most annoying thing in the world is sticky stuff, uh -huh. because um, because sticky stuff sticks. And, uh huh. Uh, it's just, you know, I was um, you know, the story about the because uh, I'm playing with some post-it little post-it marker notes things. Mm -hmm. You know that they were invented by accident. Yeah. Yeah, like like the company the company wanted the whole note to be sticky. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, but only part of it was sticky. Well, that would not be practical, though, would it? Cause well, no. The I mean, idea was the whole note, note would be sticky, right? Mm -hmm. And you'd peel it and stick it somewhere. Yeah, but yeah. peeling it off somewhere would be hell. Because you can only peel this off because part of it, it's not sticky. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. I, I don't know what the the company's original plan was, but imagine a tiny little corner mm -hmm. was not sticky and you'd be yeah. able to okay. peel it, okay? And, okay. And, and the rest of it would be sticky, right? Okay. I don't know what their plan was. But they when they did it, there was only a tiny bit on one side that was sticky. Mm -hmm. And the company were like, oh, we have to throw these out. Mm -hmm. And somebody in the company went, wait a minute. That's it's actually not a bad idea because... Because it saves the glue and you don't need it all sticky. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And uh, for some reason people seem to like the fact that it, it curves and flaps in the wind and hangs off in a kind of not straight way, kind of way, right? I like it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. People seem to like the fact that it's like that. There's so weird things that people like. And so, and so this person was like, I'm going to take this idea and use it. And they, they built the whole that whole post-it note company. Was <laughs> <on> <laughs> the they mistake. built the... the uh, Sticky paper empire. Yeah, yes. <laughs> they built the, the, a, a multi-million. Now you're taking it out of my hands. Because you are playing with it, and I like oh it. No I want no to play with it. Look, look. It's just look. so satisfying to play with. Talking about notes. talking about multi-million dollar industries that are yeah. built out of weird things like like mistakes with, uh -huh. with with stickiness and paper. Yeah. So I was talking with um, our friend who runs a chocolate company. Yeah. Uh, uh, Charlie. <laughs> Char <laughs> Charlie. Yeah, yeah, Charlie. I was talking with uh, Mr. C, who's actually Mr. T, but there you uh -huh. go. And um, and we were laughing about the, the ridiculousness of the fact that it has rained almost every day since we arrived in this um, God-forgotten place in the Highlands. And um, what? and uh, it has rained almost every day. Well, yes, but it's not God-forgotten place. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful, God-forgotten place. Okay, <laughs> I agree. So, <laughs> so, um, and he was like, "Yeah, you should run. You should, you should build a business based on like, like the weather and stuff and things." And we were, we were laughing. And he's like, he's like, you know, why don't you sell raincoats? So I was, I was like, I bet you the person who created raincoats was was a millionaire, right? From Scotland. Was uh, <laughs> from, from, from Britain, right? From Britain. Just, I thought he would be from Scotland, right? I don't know. Which part? Anyway, so mm -hmm. so I googled it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a billionaire. <laughs> the guy who invented raincoats was a billionaire. There's, there, there was a plastic product called uh, Ganex, I think it was, and um, and so he 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 turned this into special coats that he sold in in Britain, mm -hmm. and they became they became so popular and practical that the guy the guy was the guy made made absolute fortune. I bet you. I. Bet Bet you, G, that if you created raincoats that were environmentally friendly from like the paper that would just like no paper, disintegrate God when it rains, that would be environmentally the, friendly. The 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 um the disintegratable, the biodegradable plastic. Yeah, but why? Right? <laughs> when it rains, it's going to degrade onto no, you. No, it's not because it takes a while for it to degrade. It doesn't. It doesn't like fall apart in like rain. Like biodegradable clothes. Biodegradable. <laughs> Well, clothes usually are biodegradable, right? Because yeah, over like a hundred fifty years, cotton will biodegrade unless you've got a it'll, it'll get unless you've got something. something that is not <laughs> biodegradable. Well, you could argue that everything is biodegradable, right? So you could. No, well, no, you well, couldn't. No, you couldn't. You couldn't. <laughs> no, because the plastic. Takes but I was like just looking over years. there on the, the the dresser, and I saw the books, uh -huh. and I were like, "Well, that's kind of biodegradable because you could burn it, right?" Books are biodegradable because paper, they, b b you know, they chuck that in the earth and water the earth every day like you do in Scotland. And in two years, you have no book, right? It's just going to disintegrate. Chuck the books into the earth. Yes. 
Like, what do you need to go grow a book tree? Like dig grow a, a library. <laughs> what dig a hole. Bury the books. Bury the you book. <laughs> you but that's what, want to bury the that's books. what biodegradable means. Is it going well, to fall apart, fall apart when it's <laughs> in the ground, right? So you I'm going to fall apart when I'm in the ground, that's for sure. Dig a hole, chuck it in the ground, water <laughs> it, and you'll see that it falls apart. Within what two years, try, you I'll have no book. What are you doing? I tried to grow a library. <laughs> so... There is biodegradable plastic, yeah? So if you yeah, create Yeah, I've seen those, it, those, those, those thin little bags, which are really annoying, right? <coughs> are you okay? Sneezy, sneeze. There is, uh, there is a company uh, producing biodegradable plastic in Czech Republic, actually, which is now cooperating with another company in Slovakia, which produces uh, eco toothbrushes. Biodegradable toothbrushes? Mm -hmm. Isn't that That's cool? kind of hard to imagine yeah well it's cool anyway, anyway. so imagine that you have anyway. raincoats right mm. which are fashionable biodegradable you can market them as eco raincoats right there's a name eco raincoat you can and call it eco raincoat that would be that would be so a good you name. color them with ecological colors you produce them in scotland so that they boost <laughs> local economy yeah you find a you find a company that produces biodegradable plastic i'm pretty sure there must be one in uk and uh how can plastic you brand be biodegradable it? oh how does, that, how does that work i don't know i think they made it may, they make it from like biological materials like like rapeseed oil or something i don't know anyway i'm just making stuff up now but um, but but yeah, it exists. I, yeah, I, I've seen. It, but those bags are really thin, right? Those biodegradable bags are really, really, really thin. They're like ultra thin, yeah. But they do. It doesn't. The plastic doesn't have to be ultra thin. It's about the composition of the plastic that makes it biodegradable. So you're saying make thick biodegradable. Yeah. Products. Yeah. Hmm. Make them but look nice. Make them more all organic and biodegradable, or cooperate with another company you know that you can. Know, you know what would work? That can, um, like, recycle them or whatever. You know, just just make it ecological, mm -hmm. and I think that and and brand it. And you would have a great business because, first of all, if you have a strong brand, if it looks fashionable and if it's eco, I mean, that's all that you need. It's mm -hmm. all that you need to make something big, right? Uh, in, in, prin in, in principle, yes. I mean, I mean, you could take it even further and say, like, you know, let's 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 have like one-time only raincoats. Right? And you could even make it into a social business because now social businesses are growing strong, right? So for each raincoat, we are going to donate 20 cents to... The Rain Foundation. Something. Rainbows. Yes. Yes, to the Brotherhood of Unicorn or something. I don't know. It doesn't it's matter. gay organization. <laughs> okay. There you go. <laughs> no, you couldn't do that because there's a lot of people who would have problems with that. But uh, but yeah, you find a cause, mm -hmm. or you could do it like the toothbrush company that I'm mentioning. Mm -hmm. They're they're a social business. They they give like ten percent of each toothbrush goes into a fund, and then mm -hmm. they solve things locally, mm -hmm. right? So whoever comes to them mm -hmm. with a local problem, they decide what they're going to support, right? And they don't give money That's to what a charity does, no? They don't give money to like Africa or whatever, right? But they, they deal with local issues. Like they had a they had a guy who was homeless and had was in a lot of pain because he couldn't afford tooth treatment, so they mm -hmm. paid for new teeth for him. Mm -hmm. For example. So yeah, it's 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 like charity, but they're funding lots of times they're funding projects and things like that you know mm -hmm. they founded the renewal of the park in somewhere something blah 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 so oh yeah i mean that's yeah, it's what a charity should do right yeah. I mean, the charity should work locally i mean i'm not sure that um you know saving 
blind children in Mongolia um, is as important as solving local issues? Well, I wouldn't say well, important, but I would say... Um, but I think it's a. I think I mean, both look, of those things look, yeah, are important. I mean, the basic principle: helping anybody anywhere is a good thing to do, yes. right? But um, there's there, there, there's limits. Like you, you don't want to you don't want to build a play park in the next village before you build a play park in your own village, right? You know, you, yes, you, you, wanna, that's you want to you want to start closer to home with with those ideas. That's that's yeah. You want to um. Tell you what. What. <laughs> tell me, you, you tell me what, 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 what. Yeah, people, people everywhere should focus on their own local problems, right? Mm -hmm. So, like businesses in Mongolia should be focusing on helping uh, the blind girl in, Mo in Mongolia, right? Mm -hmm. That's my whole. Uh, th that's my whole thesis and argument for why the transportation of people from one part of the world to another part of the world doesn't always work. That's my whole argument. Doesn't always work. Yes. Yeah, that has been happening for thousands and thousands and thousands, yeah, and, thousands yeah. and thousands and thousands of years, right? So. Yes, but I'm talking about that the people need to solve their problems at home because if all the people with brains and intellect... Well, that has never happened, though. That has never. I mean, look at people traveling to America in the first place, right? Look at look at people from Ireland going to America. Look at people escaping okay, okay, the, tell me, tell the, the, tell the me. religious persecution wait, wait, wait. and stuff like that. I mean, people have been uh, moving oh. around for ages. Okay, can yeah. I can I make a point that that argument was good, but is irrelevant if you take into consideration the fact that you reach a point, and beyond that point, it becomes impossible to use that argument because of saturation, right? C because p what happened was that people went to America because there was land and space and opportunity and it had not been developed yet, yeah? They went to America because it wasn't developed. There was it's land everywhere. and space. And it's everywhere. No, 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 because cause you can't do it. For example, you can't do that in America now. Cause it, yes, cause you can. It, in no, good no, America, you can buy a piece of land and you can develop it. There's plenty of empty spaces uh, in America. Uh, no, no, okay, wait, 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 right? wait, 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 wait. Yes, there's plenty of sp empty spaces in America, but I'm talking about the fact you could do that in a society where there were no rules, no regulations, there was no taxation, and it was a different period of time in human history. There's always a different taxation. At different periods of time in human history, some things were done in different ways and had different meanings. Now, the people who moved from Europe because of the bad situation in Europe, because of you know the, the landlords controlling anything, there not being uh, opportunities for economic prosperity, etc., uh, etc., et well, they went to America because there was a big space there. They're like, we can go there and we don't have to deal with all of the problems that are here. And and what they did was they went to a new space, a new place. What we've done in the world now is that we've pretty much populated uh, most of the areas of large continents. Now, there's much more space than we know what to do with, right? But it's a fact. That oh, that's bullshit. I mean, no, look, no, at, wait, look wait, at the wait, Native no, Americans. No, no, right? no, 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 no. Western society. Uh, pop, look, look at the number of, peop number of people who lived in America 300 years ago to the number of people who live in America today is we have populated that area. It's times, it, it's, it's times millions more than it was. There is still plenty of space for everyone. Too. There's still more yeah, space I'm not, than I'm not making Wait, wait, wait. I didn't make that argument. I did not make the argument that there was... An, I, I actually said earlier in this conversation, go back and listen to it, I said earlier in this conversation there's plenty of space for everybody. Yeah, so what's the I, problem? I said it's a different period of time in human history. Not everything is the same as it was. Well, of course not everything is the same as it was, but people have always migrated. It's one of the things that people have always done. How do you think all the languages developed? Okay, okay, right? okay, stop, stop, I mean, stop, people stop, have stop, always stop. migrated. No. Always. D there always. Is. 
That's a big generalism and there are arguments to show how that statement is not always true. Okay. Have some groups of people always moved around? Answer to that, yes, yes. absolutely. Have yes. there been problems with some people, some people moving around? Uh, and has that been blocked and made impossible at times in human yes. history? Yes. So there's two sides. What I'm saying is there's another side. So there's there's how you there's what you said, and there's another side as well. Okay, well let me just have a look at that, shall I? Okay, so people migrating. Hmm. Okay, Romans, Vikings, Germans. Uh, this, can like I <coughs> point. There's a difference between migration and invasion. Okay, the the <laughs> Indo European Indo European languages are called Indo European languages because people migrated from around the places in Asia up to Europe. Point point in time. That was before these areas were populated. Yes. Okay. That was before okay. these areas were populated. So people have always been going up and down, migrating, mixing up. That's how language developed. That's how your language developed. English language is what it looks like only thanks to the fact that people have migrated. And the in intellectual people in one okay. area, such as the intelligentsia of Britain, Francis Bacon et al., um, were, were cogent, coherent, and organized enough to... Uh, codify what was very complicated at that point in time for society. Yes, but it was very complicated because there was many languages mixing up altogether, right? So, mm -hmm. so my point is, migration is a natural thing. Now, let's have a look at the times when migration has been stopped and blocked by governments, yeah? Mm -hmm. Uh, I lived in that until the age of five. <laughs> okay, well, so I well, can't a huge really of uh, remember exactly what it was like. But my you can't remember anything my about what it was father's like you aunt, for example, uh, has almost been killed when she escaped uh, the Soviet bloc through Yugoslavia. Bloc. And block, went, it was a block. Yes, right. and went to uh, Germany. She's been shot at at the borders because she escaped that sucks. the. Yes, because she escaped the block. So they missed, yes, right? there was yes they missed. Well, so yes, shots. there was um, there was there were times in history where migration was made impossible, but those were dictatorships. Okay. And they sucked, and people weren't happy about it. And there also was a time pre-passports, when you didn't need a passport to travel. So passports, on one side, protected people from unnecessary and unrighteous, uh, or what's called yeah, illegal Im immigration. Right? Escaping but on the, the wall and stuff. Uh -huh. but, but on the other side... They, they they stopped people from like the so you you can't just be British and go to France and start a business right? yeah you, and so they blocked that element of freedom as well well yeah so, so you've got the visas and stuff <coughs> yeah the yeah yes. yeah that stop yes. you from yeah yeah absolutely from doing what you want but uh, but yeah but my point is yes there were times where migration was made impossible but they were not good times they were dictatorships. Yeah, people people right. people travel from one place to another place only for two reasons. Uh -huh. Number one, they're not happy where they are. Or number two, they have a sense of adventure. Yes. That that, that that's it. Basic, yeah. Basically. So, so, I don't see anything wrong with people moving around, as long as. The people moving around, you know, do as the Romans do. When you're in Rome, do as the Romans do. If the people do as the Romans do, when they're in Rome, everything's fine. I don't know, what's the problem with that? Why should that be a problem? Um, yeah, it's not always, you know, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, is a good philosophy. But uh, people tend to take their culture with them. Oh. And, you know, I, I, Sorry? Yeah, I'm, I'm not arguing that it's not natural, but what I am saying is that it has it has known and unknown consequences. And uh, 
a lot of people a lot of people don't have the vision to see the unintended consequences of actions and uh, and I think that that is uh, the the biggest issue with immigration is the fact that people naturally want to help each other and mm -hmm. that's a good thing mm -hmm. um, up to a point it's a good thing up to the point where you shouldn't do something for somebody else that they need to do for themselves mm -hmm. and that's the that's the holistic conundrum where nobody knows there's not any single person in the world that really knows where that point and where that level is everybody thinks they know but nobody really knows nobody really knows how much you should do for another person um, and how much you should let that person do for themselves. It's all a process of trial and error to find out information, to get the data, to review what's happened, to understand it. Everybody thinks they know in advance, and the truth is that nobody knows in advance with that specific thing and that specific element. And that creates a problem because it plays on people's good nature, right? It plays on people's good nature, the same way that 50% that, um, uh, all of the charities in Great Britain are illegal businesses. Yeah, they do not spend. <coughs> okay, mm -hmm. they do. They do not spend their money on. They do not spend the majority of their financial resources on helping people. They spend the majority of their financial resources on stability of the organization and marketing and transportation and networking. And so what happens in around 50% of the charities in, in Britain is that only 5% of the money collected by the charities actually goes at the end of the day to helping people. Would you get your statistics? Um, Fakecharities.org. Okay. Um, so uh, that, was a, there, that was an independent organization that studied how charities or what charities do with the resources that they collect from people? Are that do, do they like list charities that are that are better and charities that are worse? Yes. Okay. Um, they did until the government closed down their website because they were listing how much the government sponsored the charities that don't spend money on helping people, mm -hmm. and how much those charities then spent on reinvesting the money the government gave them on supporting the political organisations that gave them the money. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that website has been, you know, up and it, it, it you know, it, it goes up for six months. The government take it down. They move it to a new another website. They set it up. The government mm -hmm. takes it down, and so it's a constant cat and mouse game. But uh, it's very, it's very interesting. I remember the story that your your sister uh, said, or it was you you that t maybe it was you that told me that your sister said it that uh, that the clothes that were sent by people to Africa mm -hmm. thinking that the churches would give them for free to the people. Mm -hmm. The churches were selling them yeah. to people rather yeah. than giving them for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, they were being sold, yeah. yeah so I don't know if it was by churches. Uh -huh. It was by the humanitarian organizations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. organizations that... The organizations were not helping in yeah, the people, way that... Yeah, people, people donate things for <laughs> free here and they think that people are going to get them for free but people resell those things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and the I, I the problem is that they call it charities, right? And it's it's really a business. Yeah, it's a business that maybe helps a little bit more, and it's not someone just running a business for themselves to take things. This for whole thing, this really whole thing was this whole thing with char charity for Africa is completely wrong and skewed and skewed, and we know that, right? Because because it's the Western world that effed Africa up the bum hole. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> she said, she said, and it's the said. it's the poverty pimping, isn't it? It's like, yeah, That's we're going to term. we're going to screw you for your resources, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to keep you poor with completely unfair economical conditions, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. And then we're going to give you some clothes for free because you're so poor that you can't, you know, afford it. You're so in debt that you can't get your economy out from the ditch. Yep. So we're going to donate food and clothes to you, but we're going to keep you poor, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to keep donating our trash to you mm -hmm. that we don't want anymore, and we're going to call it charity, 
but we're not going to help you get out of the ditch because that's where we want you because that's how we get our our cheap resources yeah very very well said yeah very so well i mean said. this 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 whole this whole charity for africa is just is is ridiculous it's not helping anything well yeah then that <laughs> kind of like makes my point of how much in general, good people who want to help other people don't, or, or nobody, nobody is able to judge where the line is of mm. how much do you help and how much do you let people <laughs> do things for themselves. So let me break your legs and put a plaster on it. Well, to a certain extent, yes. I mean, like we have to, the, the same question arises in parenting, right? The question in parenting is, you know, when do you, you know, how much do you help them to do it? And then when do you let go and try to let them do it themselves? Mm -hmm. you know, it, it's the same question. And but it's so the most difficult for me. Yeah, so we, you, you've got the most sort of the West, Western culture trying to parent the world. And mm. Western culture might not be the best culture to but parent But they're not the just world. parenting the world. They're exploiting it in the first place, though. Um. Yeah, there's a counter-argument to that. I don't disagree with you, but there's a counter-argument to it. Okay. And you have to look at the counter-argument as well. Yes. And the counter-argument is... is that all, a lot of societies have had basically the same amount of time to build up their cultures, mm -hmm. right? So China have had the same amount of time to build up their culture as Britain. Mm -hmm. You know, the... Germany has had the same amount of time to build up their culture as Venezuela. Okay. In, 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 in essence, okay. You can look at, you know, changes through history and borders moving around and stuff. But, you know, I, I use countries as, as a simplification of geographical areas, yeah? And, and some have flourished and grown and some have withered and died in the sense of, in the sense of they've, they've uh, let's... Let's say democracy has been more successful than despotism, right? Yeah. And, and so you have to look at, again, you have to look at the metrics of why some societies have been more successful and why some societies have been less successful. Now, there's a large part of the problem in Africa is uh, dictation and dominance by European cultures, which ad abuses and uses people there in the, the wrong way you know it, it, it's it has it, been doing for centuries really uh, the last 200 years yes previous to that there's a big question mark about who was influencing who and where and why and you've got Egyptian culture you go back 500 years you've got Egyptian culture it's pretty dominant culture in the world it's there so you could say that there were probably more uh, more slaves to Southern European and Northern African cultures than there were, th there was probably more control in other areas. It was probably slightly reversed because, you know, North Africa, in terms of the Egyptian cultures, was, was, was probably at one point in time the most highly developed culture in the mm -hmm. world. Yeah. And so most everybody else was probably their slave. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you had the kings and queens, you know, sending mm. their, their, their princes and princess to ed Egypt for their education. Right? Yeah. So, so... Cycles and holistic history. It was, as you described it, up to a point in time in the past. But mm -hmm. then before that, it was different. In, in the, the same society's structures existed, but in a different way. Mm -hmm. so, so the domination was in a different place. Yeah. So you, you have to look at the metrics of what makes society a success and what makes a society, society a failure. And... Within Africa, for whatever reason, and the reasons are hundreds of different metrics, which include um, Europe, Europe, you know, the, the Cecil Rose Rhodes and his foundations getting involved, and um, you know, if you don't know the history of Cecil Rhodes and the Round Table Foundations, that's a pretty important part of uh, African history. Um, so, if you look at pre Rhodes era Africa. There were a number of different types of cultures that existed there, some of which were developed and successful, and some of which were not successful at all. So they had their, their own metrics of success within that. 
mm-hmm. and what you know the arg the, the argument on one side is Europe went in and exploited the resources. It's mm-hmm. true, and the argument on the other side is other people from Europe went in and tried to lift up the culture, and that that's also true, right? Yes. And one of the problems with 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 the present system, and this was your this is this is what your sister told me, and I remember this conversation with your sister, is that. Um, a lot of the cultures are at the present moment unable to develop because their IQ is not at the same level. Their intelligence is not at the same level because they believe whatever they're told. Right? Now, in, uh, IQ is not a measure of, of how good a person is or, or how good a society is, but it is a measure of how you are able to process data and information and make the right choices. And you know when when as your, the, sis- the story that your sister told me was that uh, was that you know African people want the best for their kids, and you know in come these foreign people who have money and who have influence, and they say we're gonna we're gonna help your kids, you know we're gonna make sure they get a good education, and we're gonna extend them. So yeah, you know yes. you know the end of the story, yes. right? She okay. didn't she didn't say that their IQ is not high enough, but that she did say that they are highly gullible and they're ready to believe whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and from my yeah. perspective, a person who is gullible and ready to believe anything has, in, in metrics, lower IQ. Because they don't have the discernment ability to realize that someone is lying to them. Yeah, I'm just making, I'm just making okay, like a she, clearly she clear that that is your input. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. In my personal opinion, people who are gullible and will believe something which is not true, which is told to them, have yeah. lower IQs. They just don't have this discernment ability, and um, and that's that's a complex issue. Now you can argue that that's a result of Western intervention. There's a strong argument for that, but there's another argument on the other side, which is there are areas where that always existed anyway. So you kind of have to be careful. And more authoritarian structures have statistically lower IQs. So um, so this is this is the problem with helping people, right? Historically the cultures of certain groups have lower IQs. And if you bring in people who don't have a history of success, maybe maybe just because they haven't had the opportunities, but if you bring them into a different culture it takes generations for them to evolve to the point where their IQ raises to the level of the culture that they've Well, I don't them. know if it's a thing of IQ because if you have a culture, right, where people are gullible, it's probably because they did not have to deal with that level of evilness before so maybe it's just that it's just that western world is importing evil mother fathers into their country and they're gullible and they're like yeah we're gonna believe you because they never met with that amount of you know uh bad stuff lying cheating thing before so so it doesn't necessarily have to mean that they don't have high IQ. It may just mean that they are they don't have that level of lying. Well, look, that, that strikes me as a okay. parenting failure because it's uh, not a parenting wait, wait, failure. Wait, let me explain. If you live in a let culture, let me I I'm sorry. Yet. Well, I haven't explained yet. Can but I just finish my sentence? Yeah. If okay. it, if you live in a culture, right, where the norm the cultural norm is that people are honest and don't cheat and don't don't kidnap and whatever then you don't need to teach your children how to beware of that if you don't have that experience you can't teach it to your children because if you don't have that experience that there are these people and they are evil and they do this right then what's the point i mean uh, the the job of a parent and i, I don't like, i don't, I don't disrespect what you said, but um, the job of a parent, part of the job of a parent 
is to ensure that their children understand the nature of good and evil. And I think that it's enough to go back to the the Bible and look at the stories in the Bible about the horrible and evil things that happen. But they don't have the Bible in Africa. Yeah. <laughs> listen, I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about specifically about Africa and the fact that to say they don't have the Bible in Africa is is I find that a bit of a wild statement. Well, no, honest. it's not. It's not their tradition. Traditionally, they don't. Okay. Yeah. Can I finish my point? Okay. That I see the job of a parent to introduce their children to the concepts of good and evil. And I see the starting point of that, a good starting point, are the, the biblical stories and the biblical references, where you can see there that the human history is this, this principle of angels and devils. You know, you've got the stories in the Bible about, you know, killing killing of children and, and all the other horrible things and you know all the you've got the seven deadly sins to focus on and and all these other you know negative parts of human nature and so i i think it is inherent in the the job of a parent to introduce children to both sides allowing children or giving children the skills to interpret the reality around about them and to make good decisions and good judgments about who are good people to communicate with and who are good people to, to share experiences with. And, you know, when people misjudge other people, right, when they think that they're good and they're not, that's generally not a mistake of the other person, right? When you think that someone is good or doing something good and they're not, that's a mistake in your judgment of that person. Oh, yes. And it's a mistake in your judgment because you don't have the skills necessary to attain the right kind of information from the situations in order to make the right kinds of judgments. And those skills, you, you can get them from basically one of two places. You can work hard and study and teach yourself or you can be educated in it by people around about you when you're growing up. And one of the roles of a parent is to ensure that children get those opportunities, those experiences, and those tools that they will need for their future. Yes, but that does that you cannot you cannot make that apply to a different culture that is so completely different. You cannot list, look if you you got you get let's just be extreme yeah you get people growing up uh, in conflict uh, like is israeli palestinian conflict yeah so people there growing up in that conflict are teaching their children something else that we teach our children here right so they're going to teach children you know uh, this this is what you have to do if if this happens or this is how you make sure that you don't get killed by uh, a soldier or blah 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 whatever yeah so they, they teach different skills different trust they teach you to deal with different people right what you said is all true but it applies to our culture you used our cultural reference at a bible right uh, you are talking about our culture, but when you are growing in a culture it, 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 that has a certain uh, moral standard, they have their own Bible, right? Uh, not not real Bible, but but uh, 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 figurative Bible, right? They have their own moral codes that they have been running on uh, for ages, right? Decades, centuries, God knows how long, yeah. And then you bring something foreign into the equation, people are not going to be ready for it, right? Of course they're going to fall for it. Of course they're going to be gullible if their moral codes were completely different. They didn't w if if they didn't work with this kind of subversive behavior before, yeah. So, if this didn't exist in their culture, yes, they're going to be gullible. Yes, they they have. Yes, of course they have to adapt, right, to this new situation. That's what my sister is doing was doing in Ghana. She was helping the people there to adapt to this new situation, to these human traffickers, to, you know, uh, to the level of, of uh, 
lying and cheating and, and subversive behavior from uh, the, the the human traffickers uh, that people weren't used to. They didn't understand. They didn't have... They, you, she, she wasn't teaching them not to believe them because the people were stupid. She was teaching them not to believe them because it was new for people. They didn't understand that somebody could do that, right? Because they weren't used to it. Because their culture is so completely different, or used to be, than our culture here. We are here, we are used to that. We are teaching our children to beware of, you know, the stranger danger, the blah, 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 blah. Because that's, we consider that normal. We consider that usual, right? We consider that a, a real dangerous situation that could happen because we know that these evil people exist within our society. But if the culture before did not have this kind of evil people in their society, then there is no reason for the parents to teach their children about the stranger danger or about not trusting somebody uh, who's going to scam them through the internet or whatever, right? Because it didn't exist. If it doesn't exist, you have no reason to teach your children about it. If you don't have any reference, any previous reference for it, right? I don't have any previous reference for a, a rebel invading my house trying to kill my family, so I'm not going to teach my child how to shoot from an automatic gun, right? Like somebody at Middle East could do. And consider it a basic parenting thing, right? You understand my point? I understand. I understand. But that, that doesn't mean that I'm I'm not intelligent. Maybe somebody at Middle East could say, "Oh, those European parents are stupid because they're not teaching their children how to shoot and protect themselves." Yeah. But if you don't need it, you're not going to do it. I understand that the cultures are different. Um, and I, I know this is not really an argument because I'm going to use the statement at the end of the day and at the end of the day is not an argument. This is the beginning of the day. Um, <laughs> this is the beginning of the day right now. But at the end of the day, the nature of good and evil exists in everybody. And at the end of the day, trust is trust. And I know that's not an argument, it, but I, I think it's, it's foundational to understand. It's an understanding that trust is trust. It's It's a skill that you have to develop through experiences that you have and Western society gives more opportunities to the young to develop those skills than probably a lot of other societies. Of course I can't speak for all other societies so because I don't have a clue what happens in some other places but the 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 way in which the 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 Maslow's hierarchy hierarchy of needs has been taken care of in Christian Western society is quite phenomenal in terms of human progress and that's no guarantee of happiness or success but it it damn well makes a lot of things easier for a lot of people <laughs> the fact that that exists the fact that those basic human needs are t are taken care of by uh, people who have come before in society. Like, uh, we all have clean drinking water because we stand on the shoulders of giants who have devised systems for uh, cleaning the water and transporting the water and allowing people access to the water. And your point is? It is not taken care of in the modern Western society at all. It's well. It's we, like we can go to the bathroom and get water. When we turn on the tap. That's pretty much it. Take you get off. clean drinking water. Yes, that is true. But food. How many children yeah, in I Britain live yeah. under the line of poverty? I wasn't uh? talking about food. Yeah, I get the point. I wasn't That's talking about food. Though. I was talking about drinking water. Yes, I know. I wasn't talking about things that don't work. I was trying to make yeah. a point about things that do work. Okay, I was pointing out what does work. It's easy to point out what doesn't work, and I agree with you about that. But my point is about things that do work. Yes, but you were talking about the Maslow's hierarchy, and, and yes. food is a part of it, and it does not work everywhere in Western culture. It's just my point. Food is pretty easily and readily available to everyone in this country. Does it cost money? Yes. Is it always nutritional and good? No. But it is pretty much a readily available resource. Now, there's 
th there's a whole bunch of problems connected with it, for sure. Are is society improving those problems? I think in general, yes. I think that we it, it's kind of that roller coaster ride where yeah we made everything accessible and then companies came in and see it saw how much profit they could make and so the quality of the food went down when the profits went up and people's health went down and hopefully now we, we've reached a point where we're, we're turning that around again hopefully. and yeah well, yeah, it's, it's, yeah okay we, we don't that have again you we know, don't. there's more there's more juice bars now appearing um um there's there's more a regulation of of the products that go go into food. There's more people reading, mm. reading th the labels. Um, now that doesn't mean that people are going to make the right choices and people aren't going to bend the rules, but it does give people who have discernment the 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 opportunity to make choices about what and what not to do with the resources that they have. Let's just say that we don't have famine. <laughs> okay. There okay, are still okay. people. There are still people who are poor, and have problems to yeah, get and, on and, day and, to day. And the converse side of that is, right. but there's no. There famine, are so. there are, there are people here who have access to food, but are totally nutritionally uh, deficient. Yes. Yeah. 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 Which, which yeah, is. Yeah, but that wasn't really what we were talking about at the beginning. No, it, it, it it's not. But it's the truth, right? Mm -hmm. It, it, it's true. Yeah. There are people who have access to all to to everything they need and are nutritionally deficient mm -hmm. as a result yeah. uh, because they make because they make bad choices mm -hmm. and the wrong choices. But what is important in that equation is that they do have the access mm -hmm. because they you know they if 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 you say to you know some people if you you know if you if you limit <coughs> and you know the basic principle of this is uh, <coughs> you okay. Just bless, music. bless, bless you, Just music. and um, bless you twice, and the um, you know the the example of that is I, I think to understand the example of that is is the same as to understand the example of uh, a principle like phone calls, right? Now, do do you need money to have a phone? Yes. Do you need money to pay your bills and make the calls? Yes. Is that extremely expensive? No, most people can access and acquire that 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 ability within society readily. Yeah, I mean, there's not uh, th th there's homeless people who have m mobile phones before they have homes, right? You know, so it's 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 a really important no, point of access. No, it's cheaper to have a mobile phone than to have a home. Yes, yes, and it helps you get your home because it gives you access to data and information and communication which you wouldn't have otherwise, and so it's part of the process, and. Um, yeah, you wouldn't have those mobile phones unless you exploited Africa and uh, without children, child labor. Oh, and, weird, uh, weird random point, which is n which is not part of the discussion. Oh, okay, which is true. okay, weird, okay. weird random <laughs> truth thrown into the middle of the conversation. Okay, okay. just making a point. Yeah, yeah weird random truth. Making which a point. Weird random truth, which which doesn't you know form any part of the argument, right? It um, so, yeah, I don't want to look at the process of how this phone is, is made. I want to look at the fact that um, it, it, it's a tool which allows people an opportunity to improve the quality of their lives if they want it. And there was another point I wanted to make before that. but um, It is only as cheap as it is for people to get phones. Oh, I remember the point. Thank you. Thank you for reminding because me. Because... Wait, thank you for reminding me. Can I make my original point? Because you kept interrupting and I couldn't make my point because you kept interrupting. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, the point is that that access is key. Mm -hmm. Without access... You know, if you if you if you say, okay, you people can come into the library and you people can't come into the library, mm -hmm. it's horrible, right? Mm -hmm. So access is key. So as long as you have access, then you have opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, raising the level of society and creating success begins with access. Mm -hmm. And And people have the access to the food. There's no one standing at the front of the supermarket saying, you absolutely can't come into the supermarket because you're whatever, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's key. As long as we have 
that access for people, which creates opportunity. Beyond that, it's very difficult to dictate the metrics of what is going to be success and failure for anyone, anywhere in society and the world, because you get rich kids that have all the resources in the world mm -hmm. and they screw it up and fuck it up and piss it away, right? Mm -hmm. And you get poor kids that grow up with nothing and, you know, by the time they're 30, they're, they're multi-millionaires, right? And uh, one example of this would be, I think, 50% of the... Uh, the NFL in the United States, for example, mm -hmm. you know, the, the kids who grew up in poverty or the, and look at the basketball uh, and the baseball as well. The kids mm -hmm. who go into those sports are able to make millions coming from backgrounds without much at all. And they're able, a lot of them through the help of financial organizations and institutions that exist to sustain that success. Mm -hmm. And so, so, you know, the, and, and what allows these results to play out is the fact that people have access and then beyond that you just have to put it down to individual ability to make the right decision at the right time. So mobile phones, I looked into it and I found one, one phone, one brand of phone. Mm -hmm. One brand of phone that is, that does not exploit child labor that does not fuel conflict, right? That uses resources as ecologically and as humanly fairly as possible. And it's called Fairphone. And it costs about, it costs about 500 pounds per phone, which is pretty freaking expensive, right? And it's made in a way that's supposed to be durable and easily fixed at home. So you can take it apart if something gets effed up and you can fix it or you can take it to a shop and have it fixed, right? Because it's not like sealed plastic, everything in place, it fucks up, I'll throw it out and get a new one, right? Mm -hmm. It's made to last. Uh, and I imagine that a lot of that price probably goes into the branding, right? Goes from the branding. Uh, but I imagine that partially it must be that expensive because it doesn't exploit what the other phone companies exploit, right? So are you saying that everyone who has a mobile phone from a major company is contributing to the exploitation of... And so am I, yes. The battery in my phone has lithium in it, which is mined by eight-year-old children in Africa who die of cancer because of it, yes. S and let me understand the consequences of this. Uh -huh. You're not going to stop using your phone. Right now, I cannot stop using my nobody phone. Can, cause but, nobody can, because nobody can. But... But that is a problem. That is a problem. That is a huge, massive problem. Because not only people are supporting that unethical stuff that's going on, right? But they're also, uh, th that is, uh, it is also a huge uh, problem for the ecology. Because you're throwing out that stuff, that, that unecological stuff, right? Um, wherever, yeah, and it gets into the environment and yeah. it creates massive amounts of plastic waste and toxic waste. Yeah, my my, my point is, and that that's all true, right? Uh -huh. That's all true. My point is, the same people that I've seen, the same people that I've seen. Uh, arguing for the, you know, the, the betterment of those societies, which need to be improved, are the same people that saying, let's, let's use electric cars, right? I get it, I get <laughs> it. <laughs> you get it, you, 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 get, get, it. you get the contradiction. I get it, yes, it's the electric cars are great for our environment here in Europe because they don't blow out stinky fumes. But they're destroying the world in other places. But they're destroying the world in other places, yes, because you have to mine for, for, for lots of bad stuff. 
husband, which again is is done by children. But this is the problem. You see, this is this is where the big companies should be held responsible for where they get the resources from, who works for them, and so on and so on. Because as a consumer, right, I can okay, I can save up money and I can buy a fair phone, right? If this one breaks down, and I can support a good company that does tries to do good stuff right and they and they try to make sure that things get recycled and yada 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 but but you can't solve the global problem by doing that because not all people can afford that and 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 not everybody knows about it it's just a part of of the way to solve the problem i think that the companies should be pushed the companies should be pushed not to do the bad shit that they do. I agree, and I think that pressure should come from the consumer. Well, yes. I don't think that pressure should come from government because that can be completely abused and then the, the, the society would fall apart if that pressure came from government because government would then jump in, try to regulate everything, and we'd end up like Venezuela. So it needs yes, to but be... Yes, but if you... People. Yes, but you cannot... This is not something that you can easily regulate by demand. Because, well, you can if people stop buying the product. But they won't, they because it's a monopoly, right? It's not a monopoly of brand, right? Then people need it's the product. A, it's a monopoly of it's a monopoly of 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 I don't know, yes. of resources exploitation. Yeah, okay, right? okay, okay. But what about you know what about people eating chocolate, right? What about people eating chocolate? Well. That's like you, there's, there's a strong argument for that. That's deforestation of the rainforest. Yes, everything that contains palm foil is a problem. Is a foil <laughs> palm oh. oil <laughs> is a problem as well. Absolutely, it yeah. is a problem. Yes. But what about this? What about the material for this bed that we're lying in? Right. I mean, we don't even know where it came from. What if somebody was no. exploited in the production of that? Probably. Yeah. You, uh, yeah. I, I think that if we analyze everything. We can find a problem. We can find a problem with it, and there are some massive problems that need to be dealt with. They can't be dealt with instantly. They need to be dealt with progressively over a period of time, so that the, that economies don't fall apart. Yes, it is much easier to go to a supermarket and choose a chocolate that is made with fair trade cocoa, right, than it is to choose a fair trade phone, because there's almost nothing on the market. There's one brand on the market, right? One. Well, there's not even... The, the That's what I'm uh, saying. How do we know? How do we know that the marketing of the fair trade phone uh -huh. is what it says it is? Yeah. Okay. No, no. I... Because there are, because there are uh, organizations that overlook that stuff, that have a look in that stuff, that tell, that tell you how transparent everything is, that, that the fact that they can check it, mm -hmm. you know, I've seen a I've seen a page that didn't only deal with you know what they mine who where but also the transparency of the business right mm -hmm. and the fair trade phone is one of the mo one is the most most transparent mm -hmm. phone producer in the world right now. Yeah, and all the all these things are good. I'm just putting out there the question that how do you know that? Uh, okay, here's. Here's what I think people would do, mm. right? In, in, if if business is war, which I think it is in all the places. It is, right, absolutely. Right. right, so here's what you do. You realize which organizations uh, regulate the fair trade. Mm -hmm. And you make deals with them. Mm. You make deals with them. You put people on the inside, the same way that, that every criminal family has a member of the family who works for the police. They put them in and they train them and they work for the police. So they've got yes, inside. Yes, but you have... Uh, you, you have there are uh, independent bits and pieces here yeah, and there yeah, no, that there check are, there the situation. Are there good uh, organizations out there? Yes. Are they doing fantastic jobs? Yes. Mm. I'm just putting out there the question that that over time, the good idea could possibly become corrupt because that's how it would be manipulated. Right? Look, at, look at what happened with the World Cup, right? And, and, and football. Football is now... Football. Football is now the most popular and the most corrupt business on the planet. Oh, well, yes, obviously. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now, its popularity has, has, uh, has, has been great for so many people in so many places, and it's, it's in, in, 
it, it's increased people's quality of life, it's increased people's health, it's given them opportunities to meet and get out, and mm-hmm. there's just so much positive that's happened in society. Yet, yet at the same time, the result is that it, it's become extremely corrupt. So we have to. Uh, yeah, but among people, balance. among people, you have you know people. People can control things. People can check and inspect things by yes. themselves they to can. a certain extent. Oh, so look who's up, darling. And Zara, like you have those, yeah, like you have oh, that you morning, check. Darling. Are you gonna jump into bed with us? You have yeah. that. You have that Czech YouTube channel. You've got that Czech guy who checks the major brands, right? And he the goes. The Czech to guy checks. Yes, <laughs> and and he goes to a lab and he takes them to the lab and he and he has everything checked for pesticides and for things that are not supposed to be there. And he yeah, goes he's out got and he like tells you. That are great. And yes, and he tells you, okay, look at these major brands that you that you thought were really good, like, like major brands of tea that are that are in Britain as well, right? International companies. Yeah. And he tells you, well, this huge major inter- international company uh, contains a mm-hmm. uh, higher amount of pesticide residues than whatever else, yes. right? So, yeah, so you get, you got people who are, who you cannot make everybody corrupt. You're always no, no, going I to I have I independent I individuals that are going to get the information out there. So, so yeah, they're not, if they don't get like bumped off on the way. Yeah. You know, so as soon as you are, as soon as you are transparent, so the transparency factor is important as well. So as soon as you're transparent, then that means that your your uh, average person can check, right? Yeah. Well, there's like uh, so that's important. There was the the food forensics organization through Natural News that discovered that that breakfast cereals actually contained uh, harmful metals in them, not mm-hmm. just natural metals, mm-hmm. but actually harmful yeah. metals in them. So, I mean, all, all those things are, are very important. And, you know, that's the that's the beauty of independence. We have to finish because we're not going to make it to the market. I know. We're going to miss the brandy. <laughs> we are, we are, we are. Um, What's a brandy? Oh, it's a yucky drink. drink that's made from I have no idea what brands <laughs> I guess you can make it from anything you want really and just call it something brandy you can call it apple brandy or plum brandy oh it's, so it's like the it, it's, it's like a vita si- it's like a vita it's sisters a spirit. it's a spirit that's made from sort of any yeah. kind of fruit or it's like the vita sisters I think right. mm-hmm. yes okay hi check it out I'm gonna have to master will is up he is scratching his belly and Hi, darling. smiling his mouth. Did you sleep okay, Will? That's um, excellent. Yes. That's great. What's up? You have a sore throat. Oh dear. Yes. Go, go have a bun. Go and have breakfast, Will. Help. Help yourself, right? Help yourself. You're so independent. That's a good thing. That's a very good thing. <gasps> Let's go downstairs and have breakfast, all of us, shall we? Okay. Yes, it's t- it's 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 time to finish because if we want to get carry to the market, you. Daddy then can carry you. He's we've very got strong. sort of half an hour to get up and get out, which is impossible. We can't do it in half an hour. I I I'm gonna struggle to get shit together. It's you don't have to get shit together. You have to because you, you always get all the shit together, and I just faff around. Yes. Yeah, okay. There you go. That's mm. that's that's how it works, right? I still Do have to work. <laughs> Do it done. done. Okay. Work. Yes. Bye. Yes. Many important things to be done. Muchness. Much muchness. Mm-hmm. Bye. What's, can you say bye? Can you say, can put a, put out a positive? Nah. Put that. Uh, 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 I, I cannot c- say that. Can that's you not sure. say that? No. Right. Um, um, put out a positive intention for the day. A positive intention. Yeah, yeah, be intentional. Put out a positive intention for the day. 
posi- my positive intention for the day is for you to deal with all the chores and the kids and me to earn some money. It's a good positive intention. I'm not quite sure that that falls in that category, but okay. <laughs> it's very positive and it's very intentional. <laughs> this is what I want you to do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Duty done. Let's go have some fun. Oh, my neck kills me. Ow. 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 My ears are falling off again. Yeah, take the headphones off. Ow.